Okay, in this video, what I'm going to do is finish off a two-part question that I'd started in an earlier video, um, uh, testing the difference between two population means uh, using the t-distribution, um, using the pooled standard error. Um, the second part of this video actually involves the confidence interval calculation. So remember, this example was um, discussing differences between male and female time spent on social media websites. And we, um, we found there was not a significant difference, if you remember. The, the hypothesis test uh, failed to reject. And since the hypothesis test failed to reject, and remember this was not a um, statistically significant result. All right, so what we're going to do now is calculate a confidence interval, because if we look at the Part B here, you know, Part B says construct a 99% confidence interval for the difference of the two population means. Interpret the meaning of this confidence interval within the context of the question. All right, so this is the big question right now. The hypothesis test failed to reject, right? So remember, the, 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 the null hypothesis form is that there is no difference. All right, so now I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is, are the two population means, in fact, exactly the same? So that when I subtract them like this, take the two population means, you know, that I, in fact, get the number zero. Is that, is that a true statement? Well, you know, the answer to that is we don't really know um, because we don't know the value of the population means for each of the groups. What we did was, remember, we used the sample means in here and compared the sample means to pass judgment. So what we could do is, you know, if, that, if the question is, you know, you know, I don't know what the difference is, you know, can we find it? The answer is, well, we could find an interval that we feel comfortable it lives in. We're never going to be able to pinpoint that difference exactly, though. All right, so that's what a confidence interval is going to do. So let's look at the formula for the confidence interval. So this is the two-sample t-confidence interval. And I'll be honest, it's a mess to look at. So notice what it does. If you look at this statement right here to the left, you got the statement to the left, you got the statement to the right, and then you got this thing in the middle, which is what we're trying to estimate. We're trying to estimate the difference in the population means. And notice it says it's sandwiched in between these two expressions on the left. And if you notice what this says, you know, this t-score, this little piece right here, the t-score times the standard error, remember that's the error of the confidence interval. And listen, all confidence intervals are the same. You take your statistics and you add and subtract the error. And that's what this says. Your statistic, x1, x2, subtracting, minus the error. Your statistic, plus the error. All right, so as you can see, the formula is messy. A lot of people would write it like this, though. Um, a shorthand way. Take the difference between the two sample statistics, add and subtract the critical t-score times the pooled standard error. And the pooled standard error naturally is here, which, we, you know, Jump gave us that output. So technically, this thing will look as follows. It'll take the two sample means, which the two sample means were 36.3 for the males and 42.5 for the females. And it will add and subtract the critical t-score, which, you know, I forgot, but we wrote it down before. The critical t-score, here it is. 1.98 times the standard error. And Jump gave us that output as well. Here it is, 9.3145. So this is a shorthand way of writing it. So you're saying, well, you know, what happened to this thing right here? You know, the, 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 mu, the mu1 minus mu2 with the less than symbols. Well, that's implied. So in other words, when I work this expression out right here, and I, and I take this and, you know, do this difference, subtract off the error, and, you know, that'll get me one endpoint, and then actually add the error, it'll get me the, the other endpoint. Now, the bottom line is we don't have to work this by hand. You know, we're just going to go to jump because jump's got a built-in calculator for this. So let's go to the add-ins. Statistical calculators, find the confidence interval for two means. Here we go, confidence interval for two means. Uh, we have summary statistics. The downside is, unfortunately, we're going to have to input all this information in again, and it's a, you know, a little bit of a pain in that. It's time-consuming. So let's go ahead and do this. So sample one mean is 36.3. Hmm. <clears throat> 
Sample standard deviation, 48.2. Sample size, 55. That's for the males. The females, the mean was 42.5. The standard deviation, 51.4. And the sample size for the females was 60. Choose the interval type, T. And notice, the second I choose T, then it picks your brain. We, what kind of variance assumption do you have? Do you have equal variances in which we're pulling, or are we using Welch's t-test for unequal variances? All right, well, this is the scenario of equal variance, remember. Uh, this confidence level was 0.99, because it was an alpha level, I believe. Let's go back and check that, because I forgot already, to be honest with you. This question... <clears throat> was, yep, 0.01 alpha, right? Okay. 99% competence. All right. And when you click somewhere else, it recalculates the competence interval. So let's give a look here. And it's we got it, and it works at everything. You know, it lets us know the um, standard error calculation, that 9.3145 number again. All right, here we go. Right here. There's my difference. The lower limit is negative 18.2, and the upper limit is about 30.6. Oops, sorry. Negative 18.2 and 30.6. To be honest, that's a fairly large gap, and a lot of people wouldn't be too happy with this confidence interval. But you know, what is this saying? You know, if you want to write it out in the long notation, it would look like this. It would be negative eighteen point two less than the difference between the two population means less than thirty point six. Meaning the difference in the population means is somewhere between these two numbers. First number you should notice that's that is in here. Note. Zero is inside here. You know, zero lives in this confidence interval, and you like, and you probably think it's so what? What is the big deal that zero lives there? Well, remember that was the null hypothesis. We were saying that the difference between these means is zero. That was the assumption. Um, and notice that we did not reject that claim. All right, well, we better not have rejected it because as you can see, the confidence interval contains the number zero. And remember, if you're given a confidence interval and you give a value that lives inside the confidence interval, that answer that you gave would be considered to be a reasonable response. <clears throat> All right, so as far as the interpretation of this, you know, a lot of people would say, well, I'm 99% confident that the difference in the means is somewhere in here. You know, the interpretation of that is kind of loose. Really, it means if we sample over and over and over again, that the difference in, in the, the confidence intervals that we generate from those samples um, would generate confidence intervals 99% of the time that actually, you know, caught the population mean. So the interpretation is loose. But, you know, as far as how I would interpret this right now is I would say, all right, being that um, zero is not inside this 99% confidence interval, um, this kind of backs up my belief to what I think I did on my hypothesis test, which you know was fail to reject. So if the scenario would have been reject on the hypothesis test, like if this would have been a reject scenario, then the difference in the means would not be zero. And then what would have ended up happening is the confidence interval obviously would not have contained the number zero. Um, so I think that's a kind of interesting uh, point. And as you can see, the confidence interval, of course, is going to back up the hypothesis test. They have to. All right, so you don't have to physically calculate these values, as you can see. Um, you can just use jump for the output, and I'm fine with that. Hope this video helped you out, and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks for watching.